Hello YouTube, my name is Alan Samsel and this is my channel, Alan's Cloud. Today I'm going to be rehashing a topic that I talked about in a previous video. It's uh, thin clients and uh, using the WTWare thin client operating system installed onto those thin clients. So today's video is going to be two purposes. So the first one is I'm going to show you how to install the license file onto a thin client that is running the WTWare software. There's a couple of different ways to do that. And uh, also, um, this is kind of the announcement video uh, for the upcoming video where I'm going to actually be installing the WTWare thin client software onto a different thin client. Um, I ended up getting two sponsors for this upcoming visit uh, video. One is the WTWare license people themselves, the WTWare company, and uh, the other one is PCLiquidations.com. So um, here, let me show you real quick. So WTWare.com, uh, they will be providing license files. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, for the people that subscribe to my channel uh, and you know show in a comment below that they want to be a part of the drawing the contest for these license files um, I'm going to be giving away four of them and uh, so it's as easy as that you know subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comment of that video uh, or, or this one that you're interested in that and uh, uh, what I'm going to be installing on is, uh, this is their website, PCLiquidations.com. Uh, they were nice enough to uh, provide me with um, one of these uh, HP T620 thin clients. Uh, it doesn't have an operating system, but it does have a hard drive uh, already on it. Um, so it's it's perfect. It's, it's only $43. That is a very competitive price uh, compared to even eBay. Uh, you can find them on there, but you kind of got to be careful on eBay because they a lot of times they don't have power cords uh, uh, with a lot of the thin clients that are out there. Uh, or they're selling them really cheap, and that's because they're for parts. So just be very careful out there. But uh, this particular one, uh, 1.65 gigahertz, uh, 4 gigs of RAM, DDR3, 16 gigs uh, uh, on a solid state drive. Now, the WTWare OS is very small, but, um, you know, this is going to be good. So I'll... I'll I uh, haven't gotten it yet, so I'll, I'll definitely do the unbox on that. And again, we'll run a, uh, uh, you know, sort of a, a contest, not a contest, but uh, a giveaway, if you will. Uh, if you're interested, subscribe, you know, let me know in the comments uh, of the video that you, you want to be a part of that drawing, and I'll pick at random four people to give the licenses to, and WTWare will end up, um, you know, I'll contact you and, and get your uh, email address and WTWare will, will end up sending you the licensing information email. So, um, but uh, on to the rest of the video. If you're interested in how to go about installing the license onto a thin client, I already have the one that I previously did and that's the one that I'll be installing today. So let's just jump in and start talking about uh, the WTWare software itself. Uh, if you've got a thin client, old one laying around, or you pick one up on eBay or from you know PC Liquidations, they've got some pretty good prices on there. Um, you know, you 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 want to be able to run an operating system that isn't going to bog it down and is is a little more up to date. I mean, the, some of the options for the older thin clients out there were Windows 7 or, you know, specific thin client operating system from Windows that uh, didn't have a lot of features. Well, you know, I'm, I don't necessarily want to run that. I just basically want to be able to make a simple connection to my virtual machines that are running on my uh, Dell R710. And uh, I ran across WTWare because uh, apparently it's it's used quite a bit in the Raspberry Pi community, it was ported over for the Raspberry Pis, and you can actually do it that way as well. So that's a very cheap intro into uh, starting a, a thin client at home to be able to connect to your virtual machines as well if you have a Raspberry Pi. Um, so their um, licensing is, I think, 40 euro for one license, not too bad, but um, you can download and install it and use the evaluation copy and and it has all of the features of it but it does have an evaluation uh, strip uh, along the right hand side of the screen um, so you can uh, you know and I encourage you download the software you're gonna want to actually 
Uh, there's several different ways that you can install it onto the thin client. You can run it over a Pixie boot so you can have your Windows or uh, machine itself with the installer for their WTWare software. You can install the uh, um, client software to push the operating system to the thin client over your network. So that's one option. Uh, for me, I, I prefer running it off of the hard drive that's already in the machine. It's not like this WTWare software is all that large. So I just install it straight to the local hard drive. Um, so you, you set up the settings and, and we'll go through there. I'll show you the, the software again. Um, you set up the server information, you set up the screen size, um, and you, you know, create a USB boot disc and you, you know, put it into your thin client and you boot it up and, uh, in, install the software. Um, there is a, uh, an option to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, it runs off of the local hard drive, which is the way that I had it for the longest time. Um, and then um, the WTWare folks said, you know, uh, they offered me a license. Uh, so I went ahead and went through the process of installing that the other day and, and come to find out there are a couple different ways. One is you can create a um, WTWare.LIC file with the information, you know, after you've registered and used your, your um, email address and the password they give you into one of their... Uh, registration websites uh, it generates a specific license information string that is tied to the mac address of the network card that you're going to be using in the thin client uh, so you have to be very careful of that and i'll kind of step you through that as well um, so speaking of that let's take a look here um, so their instructions are are pretty specific um, you know this is this is again the evaluation copy strip this is just you know their instructions right on their website you find the mac address that's why i said in, you want to install this first as the evaluation copy and then come behind it and do a, a license file <coughs> um, it'll support multiple virtual machines uh, so you can have uh, you know different servers that it connects to um, so that's pretty nice uh, this is a little screenshot, um, and I'll again I'll show you a virtual machine of the tool a little bit more. Um, let's see here, and that's this this right here is kind of what it's showing you when you go to the licensing website. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, it'll have your email address up here, and how many licenses are available to you, and how many you've done already, that sort of thing. Um, and you know, here's a very specific warning: you you have to put in the MAC address for your uh, network card exactly the way you see here. It has to be the the, the you know two two digits or characters separated by colons. Uh, you put it into this box right here, uh, and if you do that and then hit generate static license. If you do that wrong, it, it will still spit out a license, but you're not going to be able to use it because again, it's tied to that MAC address, and they're they're very specific about you know. If you get that wrong or you your uh, NIC card and it dies or something like that, you're going to have to work with them on a case-by-case -case basis to get that back. Um, so after you hit that Generate Static License button, this is what a license file from them looks like. Of course, this one won't work, but um, you know this is what you uh, copy and paste right here out of the website. And uh, again, you can do this, to, uh, th I think, three different ways. Um, so number one, you can take that license information and you can copy it straight into their software and I'll show you the spot where you copy that in. Uh, the second way is you can actually, um, you know, on my Mac, I right clicked on my desktop, I, I created a new text file, I think it was RTF um, was the text file. I copied and pasted that information in there exactly the way it was. And then when I saved the file, I, I took the file extension uh, of RTF off of the end of it and replaced it with that LIC and I named it WTWare, right? So that fits with what they're telling you to to create. Um, okay, so here's the screenshot um, of the software itself. Uh, this is on the actual configuration tab and uh, there is a add license thing here and you can actually copy it in here um, and then hit add licenses and then it, it you know, it's based on that um, mac address in there and and so that'll marry up when you make a usb thumb drive bootable uh installer um you're going to have the option at the very end of clicking you know add license file to that uh, installer um, but the way that i did it first 
was I went through and again created that uh, wtware.lic file and I uh, put it on a, a thumb drive, USB thumb drive, uh, just as the only file on the you know top file structure. So it was I think uh, FAT32 um, reads perfectly fine, and uh, and I'll actually here I'll show you on the box itself. So this is going to boot up, and this is my actual um, HP Thin Client that I have. So there's the post screen for the Thin Client itself. Then the WTWare is going to give you this delete button here, and you hit that a couple of times, uh, and then you know your network information, everything that's in the config file from when I installed this onto the local hard drive is is in here. But you can see here, <coughs> right below the white line there. If I go to it, you can't really see it, but that's where it is. It says load WTWare license. And if we go there and I click, uh, hit enter, uh, it says insert USB media and press enter. License should be uh, in the root directory and its uh, name should be WTWare.LIC. Uh, I put it on the thumb drive. When I booted up my system, I put it in there. I hit enter. Uh, it took it. It gives you a... Um, another screen that pops up and says the license you know was installed on the local machine and then you know when when I actually uh, hit escape and I boot into the machine uh, it, it goes straight to the um, username and, and password screen that I have set up for my virtual machine uh, you can kind of barely see that corner is where they were showing you um, when you run the evaluation version um, you know that's where your um, MAC address is going to be that you're going to copy into that generator so um, you know pretty easy um, let's go to the Windows 10 virtual machine here and I'll wake that up so this is the configuration software that you download from WTWare themselves install this on a on a Windows machine this is the template that I had already created for um, this particular thin client when my new one comes in I'll, I'll um, create another one and give it a different IP address of course um, the server that it connects to will be the same but the uh, thin client itself I'll, I'll have to give a separate IP address but that, it'll still be that same server um, so this is the first option there it's, it's going to be booting from a usb configuration because that's what you I, I wanted to create you can do a cd or an sd card whatever way works for you but um uh, in here for this particular template you you have multiple options if you double click on the server itself here's where you set that address for the server that uh the where your virtual machine is uh, here's where you set whether or not it's rdp or vnc it supports a couple of different options uh, I suggest RDP. That's that's the the best one. Um, here on the left hand side, there are all kinds of um, you know different options that you can come through here and set. Um, but you know that that server one right there is is pretty much the main one that you're going to need. Um, and then once you're done setting all that up, hit save, uh, and those parameters will be in there. The next tab, you know, on your template here is the video piece. And uh, so this is the resolution that I actually want the display here that you just saw to 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 use, um, so that you you don't overdrive your monitor that you set it correctly. So those are the two most important pieces there. There there is a screens option here where I think you can set up the multiple server configurations so that you can switch between them. Um, that's a little advanced. I haven't got that far yet, but I suspect that that's what that is. Um, this second tab here under utilities. Uh, it's a little odd, but that's this add licenses is where uh, you saw on their website where you copy in that information, then hit add licenses. And I believe because it's tied to your MAC address again, uh, and that information um, is uh, specific to the to the uh, installer that you're going to use. Um, so once you've set all of that up, you click on you know boot USB drive and uh, uh, I can't plug this thing in now, but um, it will 
you know, pop up with your thumb drive. Um, it's going to step you through all of the different options. Uh, it's going to warn you that all information is, is going to be overwritten. That's at the final step when you hit go. Um, I can't put it in there because my camera is actually taking up that port at the moment. Um, but that's that's how you go through and you actually um, set up the installer itself. And again, you can install the license in it this way. I did go back and, and um, my current um, thin client was running an older version and I wanted to update it. And so I created the new installer um, with this. This new version here is uh, 5846. That's the latest installer. Um, so I went ahead and I added my license file in there and then I created the, the new USB disk with the you know same information I had before but with that new license created the new installer with this uh, new version of the software and then installed it um, you know booted the the thin client to the thumb drive and the installation option pops up in that same kind of menu system that we were looking at before um, so the only other way that uh, they mention um, is back here in the browser. Um, scroll down a little further, and you can actually log into the thin client itself using the IP address that you set up for the thin client. If you if you you know set it up to pull over DHCP, um, that's fine. You'll just have to know what that um, assigned IP address is. I set mine manually. It's always easier to get back to it that way. Um, and then uh, you know here's what that looks like um, for the particular IP address of, of my thin client um, you know, I just typed it in and it went straight to an HTTPS um, site there uh, it tells you the version that you're running off of so that's uh, pretty easy uh, and then you know a couple of different options so apparently uh, if you set up the password correctly and whatnot you can go in here and, and configure some of those files to include adding that license um, now I, I, again I didn't do it that way I did it uh, by the USB with the wtware.lic file and then I also added it into the software itself and created a new installer to up, update my machine so those, are the only, those are the only two ways that uh, I have actually done it myself but um, so you know the the WTWare software in Windows uh, isn't the easiest. It 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 has a couple of quirks to to it. I think their wizard could be a little bit better, but um, otherwise the the software is is a, a you know very powerful. A lot of different options in there. Um, one of the things that I'm I'm really excited to try with the new uh, thin client that's coming in from. Uh, from these uh, you know, uh, PC liquidations folks is USB 3.0. Um, that's one thing that my current thin client didn't have and it was one of the things that I really wanted to test out was the capabilities of passing through a USB 3.0 device which uh, that particular thin client has uh, on the front of it uh, back to the host virtual machine over the network. Uh, so I'm really excited to try that out and um, so you know well, I'll get there. Uh, so, if you're uh, interested at all, that video will be coming out. Um, if you subscribe to the channel, maybe hit the bell. Uh, it'll probably give you the notification that that video has popped up. And again, that's the one where I'll be uh, running the the you know sort of uh, you know contest. <laughs> if you're interested, just make sure you su subscribe to the channel and uh, um, you know give me an indication down in the uh, chat section uh, or comment section of YouTube that uh, you know you want to be entered to try to win one of the the free WTWare licenses, and I'll do a drawing of everybody that says that. I don't care if there's a thousand of you. I'll take all thousand email addresses and I'll randomize it, um, and uh, you know pick a couple of winners. So um, very interested for that next video. Uh, if you like this, uh, you know like this video too, and um, we'll see you next time.